as a process to foster cultural unity. So bearing in mind, we just talked about the rape crisis that is now sweeping these migrant camps in Germany. Why would we want cultural unity with a culture based on a barbarous religion that is stuck in the seventh century? Why can't we maintain our cultures separately? We know that multiculturalism has been a complete failure. Even Merkel herself admitted that a few years ago. So why are they trying to fuse our cultures together when it's been proven not to work? Well, uh, the most important answer to this question is this. Um, the biggest and most important control mechanism for populations is personality disorders. Whether it's, it, it, whether it's pedophilia, which is often linked to antisocial disorder and narcissism, or it's migrants that come from countries of origin uh, where, that are dominated by, by people with antisocial disorder and just, you know, these, these really nasty, um, nasty disorders. Uh, so... Um, a single person could be a pedophile, could be a, a, a really bad migrant. Uh, every bad single bad person can hurt any number of healthy, uh, uh, healthy people out there. So if you have a certain percentage of people with heavy disorders and you think, OK, every single dangerous person will keep a certain number of other people, healthy people, busy or hurt these other people, then you can do the numbers in your head and you realize that uh, every country, according to the elites, every country needs constant traumatization uh, to, to bring, to uh, create new people with, with disorders. So, uh, uh, so uh, some of the migrants are being hurt by bad migrants and that makes them, uh, gives them post-traumatic stress and that keeps them busy for the rest of their lives. And, and let's also not forget every second German Every other German, statistically, from the old baby boomer generation has cancer. So Germany has one of the lowest uh, growth rates. We have a, like a 1.3% 1, 1 growth rate, which is actually a shrinking rate. So Germany is actually shrinking. And uh, the argument is we need a flood of migrants every year for the next 35 years in order to prevent uh, a collapse of population numbers, a collapse of the retirement system and so on. So we're being flooded with traumatized people, uh, people with uh, antisocial disorder, narcissistic disorder, and, and, and a mixture of disorders to keep us all very busy. And everyone, everybody who got cancer, presumably from, uh, 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 for example, uh, uh, the, the shots they get, um, getting cancer is traumatic. And it's not just traumatic for the person getting ill, it's traumatic for the whole family. So it's, it's a system where you keep a population busy and uh, uh, so they have no time and energy to deal with the evil system that's above them. So um, uh, in this, uh, in Europe right now, you see the same kind of, um, the same kind of, uh, things going on that you see in the United States. Uh, listen to this. If, um, if you have a, uh, a Jeb Bush president, right? If you have a Jeb Bush president, uh, my prediction will be he will intensify a, a, a North American uh, union process and he will intensify un in an unprecedented way the cooperation with, with Europe. So America's military forces have been reduced. The banking crisis is still on. You have floods of illegal immigrants. And the argument will be we need an American Union from Canada down to Colombia in order to match the other empires in the world. China has so many people. Russia doesn't have a lot of people, but, you know, they have a lot of nukes. And this Mediterranean Union could become a serious, serious monster of a geopolitical player. So... Uh, if Jeb Bush wins the presidency, you would have a leader who has a college degree in Latin American affairs, who worked in Mexico as a student, who worked in Venezuela, uh, who's fluent in Spanish, whose wife is of Mexican origin, and who became a Catholic. So he can totally appeal to a broad audience and can integrate the legal and illegal Latinos, advance an American union, and then intensify uh, the cooperation with this monstrosity a mediterranean union that's that's a pretty likely pretty likely scenario um so that's that's kind of at the heart of this migration crisis and um 
uh, here's another interesting part of this. Uh, the um, a lot of these Arab Spring countries, where a lot of the migrants come from at the at the moment, mostly to Germany, a lot of these these Arab Spring countries, they had a, a pretty well, well. They were a lot allied with Russia, like like uh, Syria still is allied with Russia, and even Mubarak in Egypt had that sort of alliance, and that's why he he was removed. Uh, there have been documents stolen from the Gorbachev archive by a guy called Stroilov. That's a pretty recent development. So we now have like 50,000 previously secret uh, documents from the Russians. And I have this quote here where Mubarak talks to Gorbachev and he says, yeah, we were we have 50, 50 billion dollars of debt, but we're not going to pay that back. We're not expected to pay that back. Uh, we get 1.3 billion in military aid from the United States. We can't do without that. Well, but this is going to change. Uh, time will come when things turn in a different direction. I'm telling this to you absolutely frankly, is what Mubarak said. So that's why Mubarak was removed. And um, now we get all these uh, refugees from these war-torn countries, and they come to Germany. And also every every intelligence agency in the world must be buying fake Syrian passports right now. Uh, every terrorist organization worth their money would be buying fake Syrian passports right now, because with a Syrian passport, uh, you're almost guaranteed German asylum and ultimately citizenship. And just to go back on this idea, and it is a fact that Germany is losing 100,000 people a year without the mass immigration. But then on the other hand, right over the border, you've got the Czech Republic, which has had a stable population for a hundred years, they don't have a mass immigration policy. They've got a good standard of living. They've got relatively cheap housing. They've got high employment with the host population. It's the most thriving country in Europe. Along with Hungary, they've been um, amongst the most resistant to this migrant invasion. So is this argument legitimate that Germany needs to import these floods of people simply to top up uh, their demographics? Or is that more because there are no incentives for people to have children in Germany? It's being kind of frowned upon by, you know, this cultural movement of third wave feminism, which treats childbearing as some kind of burden. Where does the true problem lie in that demographic crisis that Germany is supposedly experiencing? Well, one thing is the strong prevalence of personality disorders in Germany. People don't want to have children. Uh, they've had a bad or even terrible family experience themselves. They don't want children. They see how the old generation, the baby boomer generation, how they work themselves to death, how they, they got cancer. Uh, uh, every second uh, of the baby boomer generation now has cancer. So all that's very traumatizing and people don't want to have children. If we had if we had had a normal growth rate in Germany over the last few decades, uh, we would have a population right now of 100 to 120 million Germans people. And uh, you would have kind of a, a migration uh, portion of that of about 5% max. So imagine 120 million, uh, 120 million Germans, 5% migration background, fully integrated, that would have been possible, easily possible. But that would mean Germany would be a more sovereign state. That would mean Germany would have uh, would not need a European Union or a Mediterranean Union or a transatlantic union uh, to fix problems. So uh, we see the same kind of migration um, percentage in other major countries in Europe, like uh, United Kingdom or or France. It's always this twenty percent. Uh, it's not enough to um, take away constitutional voting majority from the the, the majority uh, of citizens, but they're getting closer and closer to taking that away. And um, yeah, an, a normal growth rate. Imagine uh, the United Kingdom has one of the most dense populations. Uh, Germany has one of the most dense population uh, populations, and this is a this is a this is a situation where um, you would need 
more more children more babies i always tell that to people don't just talk don't just try to work this out politically have more children me and my wife we have two children and if we uh if we weren't paying so many taxes we would have four children or maybe five but the state does not want you to have these children and so they're saying we need these migrants to bolster the numbers and i heard i read an article in mainstream media saying that Germany needs to learn from former East Germany, socialist Soviet East Germany, because they had this uh, government system where they, uh, uh, the state was raising your children. A conservative politician said, we need to uh, learn from, from former Stasi Germany, basically. So this is getting insane because they need to put on the brakes right now. They need this topic to go away Get this topic out of the uh, the news. Get this topic away from the water cooler conversations. So that's why they're putting on the brakes right now. But at the same time, they get their multinational border patrol, the the Frontex, the multinational Frontex patrol. So it's not just which they're going to try and roll into the European army once they get social unrest yes. and race riots as a result of this mass influx of immigrants, right? Yes, yes. So so uh, previously, it's been just um, Spanish police, Spanish border guards pushing away uh, people from, from North Africa. But soon there's going to be a multinational force pushing people back and dealing with this. So uh, people can't get angry just at the Spanish border guards. They're going to be angry at the whole European Union. So kind of the... Um, the responsibility is on more shoulders. You can manage the anger better. You can manage the, the situation better. And when this is a success, uh, they're going to have a multinational European Union army. And we've seen kind of the preparations for that uh, for the last 20 years. And every Bilderberg conference, you see these massive uh, attendees who talk about this and, and uh, build this European Union force. Uh, I said before, we have at least 4 million troublesome, problematic migrants in Germany right now. 4 million troublemakers right now in a country of 80 million with 180,000 active troops. So this is a big threat. And only the European, only the European Union army could fix this threat, could solve a problem that arises. And this is very scary um, because... Uh, Germany's forces have been shrunk. France's forces have been shrunk. Uh, Britain's forces have been shrunk. They said the Cold War is over. Don't worry. Uh, we'll spend all that money on migrants and socialist programs. But now they say, oh, my God, it's back on. Uh, so no single European country can defend itself. Uh, I've read articles in Foreign Policy magazine. NATO cannot defend the Baltics. So... <laughs> All this building. We've, all this we've also got the, the French army now, as of a few weeks ago, preparing for civil unrest and immigrant uprising from yes. these Muslim ghetto towns and areas in major cities uh, where, you know, it's basically a no go area. They're being funneled arms from these very same jihadist groups that our government supported. They're talking about having to go in and reclaim entire areas of French cities because of this, quote, immigrant uprising, which they're expecting to happen. So in the name of yeah. multiculturalism and avoiding the clash of civilizations, their actions are creating a fertile ground for this clash of civilizations, out of which they will get expanded power through a European army, through further centralization of power with an expanding EU bureaucracy. Exactly. And uh, imagine imagine a scenario where you have, uh, for example, uh, for example, a, a major empire, a major global actor like Russia uh, supporting migrant groups or supporting different groups in Europe. I mean, uh, I've seen uh, I've seen information that the Russians, they still support the left in Europe. They support the right in Europe and they support the Muslims in Europe. So. Every power player, every major power player is, is trying to um, play this game of destabilization and then restabilization. And so if you have a situation where uh, things, things become hot, 
then you would see this multinational force coming in and uh, exercising some of these powers in the European Union constitution. I mean, back when it was um, rammed through, people found these uh, these um, uh, found these paragraphs that deal with uprisings 